Good evening, Somers, and uh, welcome to the Somers Town Board regular meeting, uh, Thursday, March 12th, 2020. If you would please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Patty Roll Call. Councilman William G. Faulkner. Here. Councilman Richard G. Clinchy. Present. Councilman Anthony J. Sirico. Here. Councilman Thomas A. Garrity Jr. Here. Supervisor Rick Morris. Present. Okay, our first uh, item of business is a public hearing. Uh, on the proposed local law to amend chapter 158 entitled vehicle and traffic article 1 entitled parking prohibitions section 158-6 parking prohibited in designated locations uh, to add R of the code of the town of Somers uh, publishing and posting that was published in the Somers record and posted on the town clerk's bulletin board on February 27th Okay, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay, so this action has to do with um, prohibiting parking up at the Avalon in, in that park that um, the Avalon owns, but we now own the road around that park. But specifically, no parking during snowstorms and snow removal. Exactly. So is there anyone here for public <laughs> comment on the... Okay. Well, Neil, maybe you, you have... You got comments on it, Neil, you or you're all right? What do you think about this, Neil? I don't mind comment. <laughs> Just don't go up there and park uh, during a snowstorm <laughs> because you're, you're going to get a ticket. I definitely won't. Okay. So um, thank you for putting it succinctly, uh, Deputy uh, Garrity. So seeing, hearing no one here for public comment, I'll make a motion to adopt the... Oh, oh, close public comment first. Okay. Oh, oh, close the public hearing first, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Make a, anyone want to make a motion to adopt? Make a motion to adopt. Second. All in Local favor? 158. Aye. 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 So moved. <laughs> okay. All right, well, we got that done. The parking signs, they're prohibited. So next year we'll be all set. snow. Next winter. <laughs> well, that could be okay, year. so um, be. items two and three, I don't know um, we well. canceled those public hearings for this evening um, in light of the current uh, situation with the uh, coronavirus and the thought that uh, numerous people would come out and jam this room regarding, because there's ver very much interest a lot of interest in the school so we've had canceled those public hearings to be reheld as soon as the um, threat of this this uh, coronavirus passes and or the applicant comes back and requests so they're postponed and we don't have a date yet right indefinitely okay patty uh, department reports oh excuse me let me open public comment second all in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, yes, yes. So moved. Is there anyone here for public comment? Line forms to the left. Seeing and hearing mm -hmm. no one, I'll make a motion to close public comment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Which brings us to department reports. I have reports from the Town Clerk, Building Inspector, Zoning Board of Appeals, Plumbing, Bureau of Fire Prevention, Parks and Recreation, Planning and Engineering, Tax Receiver, and Director of Finance. Thank you. Okay, under Parks and Recreation, um, award bid and authorize the supervisor to execute the contract for the replacement and installation of playground safety fencing in Reese Park with Campanella Fence Company in the amount of $7,380 per memo dated March 3rd, 2020 from Steve Ralston, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. I'll make a motion to award the bid. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. 
and then approve going to uh, request for proposals for summer camp trips, transportation, per memo dated February 27, 2020, from Steve Ralston, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. Second. Do I have a motion? I have a motion. All Do seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay. I guess summer camps could be subject to yeah, yeah, you don't know where it'll be then. Right. Yeah, you're right. Well, I'm just about to give right, you an hope. update on where we are with. All yeah. right, so well, no stealing um, your thunder. Is Anthony Fauci here? Oh, in that case, is Rick Morrissey here? Yes. Yeah. No, Anthony's so, here. So this week, <laughs> um, no Fauci. Let's see. It was last week and this week we we've had meetings with our Somers Community Council, uh, which is made up of uh, community and religious leaders throughout the town, Chamber of Commerce. Um, the Paramount was, was part of that meeting. And basically, it, it was our effort to bring them up to speed on what was going on with this uh, coronavirus outbreak, uh, how the town was preparing for it, and we provided them with a lot of information that we've been routinely posting on our uh, website for public consumption. Uh, this week, uh, we met with our emergency uh, management team, uh, which included the uh, Somers Fire Department, Police Department, uh, as well as we invited uh, North Salem's Warren Lucas, Deputy uh, Supervisor was there as well, Peter Kammerstein, and their um, emergency management uh, person, uh, Kurt. And what we really came to the realization is we're basically on our own up here for a while, uh, how to deal with uh, emergency response. Uh, we talked about um, with EMS having to respond to people's homes where we don't know whether someone in the home is on quarantine or isolation. Um, it was a concern. Um, the fire department, the EMS spoke about, they had X amount of garb, safety garb to be able to go in, which are um, uh, you know, um, lab coats like and, and um, physical uh, masks and protection. One time use only equipment. Right, so you know, they do 3,000 calls a year in, in Somers. And you know, they don't have stock, but you, when you don't know when you go into someone's house, what you're gonna find, uh, they're changing some of their protocols. Whereas maybe three people or four people would've went in, um, their protocol will, would be that only one person would go in and to assess. Um, I've been on, let's see, three calls now on this, no, two calls this week. Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 4 p.m. Uh, there are municipal calls with the county executive's office uh, and they give us updates and um, one of the things that, uh, and then it's question and answers. So um, I was fortunate to be able to get a question in and a, sta and a statement. Apparently uh, Rick is very good on the buzzer. He was the first one yeah. to buzz in, so he got on first. Well, um, when, when uh, George Latimer said, uh, okay, now we'll be taking quests, <laughs> and uh, Rick Morrissey, yeah. Town of Somers. Warren, Lucas, Warren Lucas was suitably impressed. <laughs> oh, was he? Okay. So, uh, that's right. And our, at our emergency management meeting, uh, Deputy Supervisor uh, Garrity was there as well. And, you know, it was just a realization that a lot of this burden for investigation and response is going to fall in the municipality. Yeah. The okay. county can, cannot do it. Um, and the state is basically the lead agency. They're, they're coming down here with test kits and the county is helping them with investigations. But, um, you know, and hopefully, you know, knock on wood, we'll, we'll be able to get, get through this. But um, let me get back to the call for a minute. So I was uh, very concerned about uh, the fact that how would a municipality know when we get positive nor um, uh, coronavirus cases. Um, anecdotally and through community um, input, we had learned about 
someone that was supposedly uh, positive, that they were being isolated and their family tested negative, so they were being quarantined. And my question is to, to, the, uh, to the county executive and his staff, I don't necessarily have to know that as a municipal official, but my police department and my first responders certainly have to know if they're going into harm's way being exposed to this uh, new virus. Um, as of Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon, um, they did, on, on that call, they did tell us that, in fact, they got permission from the state to notify municipalities of the number of positive coronavirus cases in your, your municipality. So my, no. my comment there was, well, that's halfway there. Um, we know that now we have a positive case, but what about my first responders? Yeah. So what is, is happening is the county runs 60 control. That's where all emergency dispatches come out of. So if, if you dial 911, it goes down to um, Hawthorne and state police uh, dispatcher gets that information. If you say you're at, you live at one Main Street and um, they will look up and find out that yes, you know what, there's someone in isolation and they will notify the first responders, not the name of the person or anything else, but that in this dwelling, they're under quarantine, the family's under quarantine, and one person's in isolation, or four people are in isolation and one's in quarantine. And let me just tell you the difference between those two terms. If you are positive, positive case for coronavirus, you are put in isolation. The state health department and the county health department will be tracking your, your, your progress. Um, people who have had close contact with a positive case are ordered into quarantine. They, so in a household, you could have a positive person who should be in, in a room all by themselves with limited contact with the other family members who are in quarantine. So th that's the kind of the difference. You might hear uh, someone in my building tested positive and the landlord notified us all and they're shutting down the building and we are self quarantining ourselves. So that's out of an abundance of caution and there are many corporation businesses in Westchester County that are now doing that. But self quarantine is not going to be on the uh, dispatcher's no. role. No, no. Okay. And when, when you're on official quarantine and isolation, you are told not to answer your door. Someone comes to your door, you, you, you have to tell them you're under quarantine and there's someone in here in isolation. Um, that protective zone in Nourish Shell, uh, you can come in and out of that zone, you can go to the shopping, you can do what you want to do, but the people that are down there that have had contact and are either, you know, we know of the one gentleman who's in isolation, and, but we don't know how many people are, are in mandatory quarantine. That could be 25, could be five. But if police or medical people go to that or call to that address, they 60 would 60 Control know. will now tell them that. Well, that's right? a good thing. So we've made, you know, we've made a little bit of yeah, progress. That's common sense. On that. Um, so in, this morning we had a, um, I, I told them that this is like the, the shoemaker's kids um, <laughs> have holes in their shoes. You know, I, I finally had a department head meeting with our own employees. We've been sending information out to them, but I really hadn't sat down with the department head. So we had a, a meeting today where basically I gave this type of information and we talked about uh, things that the town uh, would institute uh, moving forward. So let me give you uh, an update on, on the county um, and the, the, the state, the county, and the town of Somers efforts to deal with um, the corona, excuse me, coronavirus. Let me just see if I can find page two to this. Okay, which I cannot. So today, the governor, um, state of New York, New York State is banning events of more than 500 people um, in any location. Bars 
and restaurants and other facilities with listed occupancy of less than 500 people will have their capacity temporary slashed by 50%. So if you have a 100 seat restaurant under this new dictate, you're only allowed to have 50 people come into your restaurant. Nursing homes are prohibiting anyone but medical staff to enter their facilities in an effort to protect the residents. Facilities can make exceptions for family members visiting residents who are in particular ill health or are facing death, though they will be required to wear protective gear so as not to spread germs to the residents. Um, it was reported today that there are 328 confirmed corona um, virus cases statewide, which is an increase from Wednesday of uh, 112. Uh, 148 are from Westchester County, uh, home to one of the country's most significant clusters in the city of New Rochelle. And that's where I'm talking to you about that one mile uh, circumference where the uh, New York, uh, no, the National Guard actually um, is stationed for the next two weeks. Yeah. And they're not there with guns. They're not there doing martial law. They're actually there cleaning and delivering meals. So Rick, is that an effect, the effective date of, of uh, uh, the governor's announcement today is today? Correct. And who notify, are they gonna notify the uh, restaurants? locally here or who's going to do that that's the governor made this statement so you have the press here i'm sure they'll be reporting it well, um but there's well, not a formal it. yeah so like that'll be on our call at four four o'clock tomorrow yeah so local guys here now essentially have to have half the amount of their occupancy rate there All right if they see 500 so no, is this is under 500. Under yeah. 500. If you're under 500, so let's oh, take a right, local right. So if you have 200, you're right. now 100. Right. So I'm, you see so that, no, four that, no would that be poster that. on the wall? Yeah. That has an occupancy for this room. Right. Technically, yeah, it might be but happy. by this dictate, half, of half that be. number is allowed in this room. I think it's as low as seven. And I, we're abiding oh. by that tonight. Damn. <laughs> yeah, tonight. <laughs> Deal's well tipping the balance yeah. right there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Could be off by a couple. All right, so that's basically you know what's going on statewide, uh, but that is certainly a concern. Who is going to enforce this? Um, Worcester County County Executive uh, George Latimer and Health Commissioner uh, Charlita Amler continue to communicate with local municipalities and schools and hold municipal calls three days a week. And I understand that they are, at least this week, have been me meeting or speaking with school districts every day of the week. So what's going on in the town of Somers? Um, the town does have one confirmed case um, under isolation with family members being quarantined. Um, I want to encourage everyone in town to sign up for Code Red. This is our uh, notification system. Uh, it's been used in the past on emergencies only. So when there's town-wide emergencies, you would get a code red. Um, we have now enhanced this code red system whereby we can get out uh, information to the public, um, general information. And this is what's, what we'll, we will be putting out tomorrow. It's basically what I'm telling you tonight. We'll be putting a code red message um, that goes out to the public. So I'm encouraging you to sign up for that. You can do that on our website. And if you want to keep informed, keep current with what's going on, get yourself signed up. Uh, limiting access to uh, buildings. Um, we spoke this morning with uh, department heads and um, what we're asking people to do is not come into offices if you don't have to. Um, you can call, uh, we encourage calling. Uh, do not show up here if you have flu-like symptoms um, or fever. Uh, what we're trying to do is create social distancing by the governor's actions, by what the county's telling us, what the schools are doing. Uh, the school actually um, closed Monday based on that, that positive case. Um, 
for thorough cleaning over the weekend. They reopened, um, they were closed on Monday, they reopened on Tuesday. Kids had school Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, today. Tomorrow the school will be closed because the teachers are getting professional uh, training on distance learning. So they're gonna, the school's gonna be closed tomorrow and they're gonna be closed um, on Monday. And this will be so the teachers can plan for if the schools do close, right. that they can continue just how to teach remotely, but just, social distancing. Just and to clarify what you said, the positive case in the school was a parent, correct? It wasn't a child. It was no. a parent. Wait, wait, wait. Right. It was a parent. So the information that we had was actually that the, uh, the family members all tested negative, including the child that was, you know, was in the school. Right. So, um, so they shut the school down to clean it. So yeah, and just another note on on, yeah. on SOMERS. As a result of this meeting, uh, we now have uh, a number of department heads now have what's called team viewer, which means I asked uh, department heads uh, who, if necessary, c could work and be productive not coming into the office. So a number of um, department heads uh, got what's called Team Viewer, uh, which allows them not only their Outlook email, but they can go into actually their their files. So, um, if 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 and when necessary, we are prepared to do, to do that and still be a productive um, town running our business. Um, the SOMERS Highway Department today announced they are closed to the public. Um, and once again, this is out of an abundance of um, caution. Um, we don't want to get our, our team that is out there and takes care of our roads, our stormwater systems, and plowing when it snows. Uh, we don't want, we're going to limit exposure to them. So they will be, um, that office will be closed. And that is a, a lot. It's been a very busy week. Um, I want to thank uh, my staff um, and our department heads for their time uh, and pulling together this uh, overabundance of information. Uh, and it's gonna, we're, we're gonna continue. You, we're, keep going onto the website. That'll be updated routinely. And uh, there's a lot of guidance information. Um, and I guess you now hearing this uh, on a daily basis, but the for a healthy person it's hand washing with soap and water that's that's better than um you know using as hand sanitizer and um also you know sneezing into a tissue and getting rid of that tissue um the virus can live on surfaces uh you know i've heard a lot of different yeah <laughs> times but from nine to 48 hours 48 hours i uh, depending the what I did here today um, was that bathrooms are a, a significant um, vector for transmission of this virus some that's positive sheds these virus cells in a bathroom they like cool cold environment so I know everybody washes their hands when they go into a bathroom but you can be extra careful um, I know that what we do here at the townhouse have been doing is wiping all surfaces and handrails and doorknobs and bathrooms uh, with antiseptic um, or Clorox wipes. And there's hand sanitizer for all employees. We're wiping surfaces that the public come in and, and touch. Uh, but once again, we are stressing um, for your own safety, for the town safety, that you limit contact in our public buildings. Uh, you're going to see signs posted on the library door, Parks and Rec, Townhouse, Annex, um, probably the Water Department, um, to limit your access to the building. Um, you know, you can call us. We are not cutting services. Uh, our employees are still coming to work at this point. Um, I've, I've sent no one home um, to work out of their home as of yet, but that's, that's, that's to be determined as this uh, outbreak continues. So um, I want you to rest assured that the town is 
prepared um, as best we can, and we're trying to keep you informed as best we can. Um, I also heard today that the uh, Heritage Hills Fitness Center will be closed uh, indefinitely. Uh, and the hope is that with the warmer weather, people are gonna go outside and um, not have this social distancing. What we do, we distance people. Um, they cannot transmit it back and forth. That's hopefully what will happen. That's how this virus will hopefully dissipate. But right now, this is uh, an outbreak. It's a worldwide pandemic, and we're taking it very serious as, as, re, as um, reflected in these actions I just read. So you want to discuss April 2nd? Can I? Yeah. Let me just ask you a question. Sure. In your discussions with the county and anyone else who is jumping on there, maybe from the state senators or assembly people, because we have um, a distinct population here that's older, and it seems that that is the target of this virus as opposed to flu, which often uh, hurts younger people more. Uh, are there any, any special um, uh, resources that are being offered to the town to, that we can help these people? At Heritage Hills, obviously we got two nursing homes in the area. Uh, it would seem to me like something I'm not sure they're going to give us testing kits, although I did hear today there's a drive through testing facility now in New Rochelle. I don't know how that works if you drive through, but I, I did read that. Um, so is there anything that's being offered to someone simply because we seem to have a, a bit of a, a, a target population for this virus? Okay, good question. And um, also this week we heard that the state is making their own sanitizer and that uh, that will be distributed uh, eventually to municipalities. Um, we are well aware that Heritage is our high-risk population over there. Um, we are in daily contact with them. Um, actually, uh, we have an agreement. There is a piece of equipment, a, a fogger, that is very effective with killing the virus on contact. So. Our cleaning company that we have under contract has one back ordered. So does Heritage Hills. So whichever entity gets it first, uh, as soon as Heritage Hills does theirs, we will make some kind of a- I thought they said they had one. They, it was on back order? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought they, they had a steamer, but that's, you know, not, not the fogger. And Rich, I asked Dave, uh, one of the head of security over at Heritage at our meeting, and he said that they're being extra careful, they're, you know, sanitizing and yeah, all the sure. public buildings multiple times a day, mm -hmm. and they understand that they have, you know, what could be considered a high-risk population, so they're trying to stay ahead of it as well. And, and it, did, is the county or the state offering them any extra That I don't resources? know. I wasn't on that poll. No. I don't think so, but. Probably it, not. It, I think they're focusing on New Rochelle right now. From what yeah. Right. Yeah. They, they yeah. you know, I think it's fair to say they're overwhelmed. I would think. Yeah, no, you, what you need is more testing. Because well, there was a doctor on the radio today say so he went to his doctor, see if he could get a test. I, I got it. He couldn't get the test, you know, which just shows like, so you don't even know who does or doesn't have it, even if you have a suspicion. Are there any additional protocols we're doing at the nutrition center with uh, the elderly and yeah, the food distribution there? Okay, yes. So the nutrition center, um, let me just say that the senior center will be closed. We'll be closed. Okay. We're closing that effective tomorrow. Um, we are going to continue with uh, Meals on Wheels. Are we going to actually try to expand it for the seniors who usually go there? But right. They so what, what Barbara did this afternoon for the people that were there, took their names, asked them do they want to participate in the Meals on Wheels. Um, and so she will be accommodating those folks. Um, Good. We also drive people to doctor appointments. Uh, we will be suspending that. We do, however, have about 16 appointments already set. We are going to honor those, but we're not going to take any new ones. Um, you know, and once again, this is uh, stopgap measures, hopefully to return to normal, but uh, this is yet another way to, um, to kind of really distance people. Really, the goal people. is to flatten out the bubble. Right. I mean, that's what everybody, yeah. everybody you talk to, they all say that 
you know, right now, if we don't do the social distancing, if we don't do other things like this, the bubble goes to a point where it could overwhelm the yeah. healthcare facilities. Right. Whereas with the social distancing, with the, with the schools getting closed, it's going to level it out more. So at least the, you know, it might take a little longer, but the uh, the, the healthcare facilities will be able to handle it. I mean, that's the goal. So yep. are, are drivers and the folks that are taking the elderly to, uh, you know, um, Doctor doctor's appointments? Mm -hmm. I guess we've talked to them. They understand that if they're symptomatic or if they have any doubt that they feel that uh, they have any type of illness, whether it's this or that, they're going to stand down. Yeah. The um, well, I hope that if the appointments have been scheduled for a while now. That it's right sort of routine <laughs> going to see their doctors. Uh, right. They're not, not taking. They're, not that they they're, they're not going to transport anybody that has a sore throat, high fever. Right. Um, you no, know, I mean, the respiratory. So I'm thinking the other way around. You yeah. know, you know, that our, our drivers, drivers are okay. Our drivers are okay. Right. So our drivers uh, sanitize the buses a couple of times a day. Um, they have hand sanitizer as well. Um, Heritage Hills is doing the same. They have a bus service that goes to the train station, and actually, um, that is going to remain in service because that bus transports a lot of healthcare workers. Yeah. yeah. Up to Heritage Hills. So uh, that's very important service. So they are sanitizing that bus a couple of times a day as well. And that was one of the things that came out of the meeting also that I thought was important too. You know, you, Somers has had the one case and all that, but we have a lot of, of businesses here, you know, healthcare and all that, where people are coming from downtown. Uh, yeah, right. You know, it's not, they don't all live in the town, so they're right. coming from areas that might be a hotter spot. Right. They're not um, taking visitors though, like uh, Caremount, right? Right. They've stopped that. They, they, were, stopped at, they were at the community But they're working. Meeting, right? But they're workers. working. That's what, yeah, exactly, Rich. Right. So Paramount has closed its doors to visitation. All right. Makes sense. I mean, they did that early on. We yeah. met with them early on. Yeah, probably Wednesday. Um, but now by, you know, a state dictate, uh, they'll, they'll be closed. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention is, so when I said we're, we're kind of on our own um, for a lot of this, when and if... Um, we have to become involved, when I say we, our, our, our police department, we may have to assist the, the county and or the state with investigations. In what way? Someone's a positive and during the interview process they find out that while they were highly infectious, they had dinner at one of our establishments. They went on a certain date, they ate between 6 and 8 p.m. and the state may say to us, you need to go in and find out who might have been exposed. So our police officers would then go into that restaurant, pull out the receipts, go through, identify who they were, um, and, and report that information back to the state so they can then follow through and find out where those people were and who they were exposed to. Now, as you well know, a good portion of our, our um, police officers are very professional um, officers that are retired from New York City and or other police departments. They're, if they're on retirement, their salary is capped at $35,000. And I can assure you, if these investigations pick up or they're called upon and they're ready, willing, and able to do this, but if they work over that $35,000, it's going to put their pension in jeopardy. So um, this the state has to grant an exception. Right. For right. So exception. Senator Harcum yeah. has um, uh, authored a bill to lift that cap for police officers. Um, and believe me, I don't see why the governor and uh, it should be a no-brainer. Yeah, it's it an emergency be. situation. Yeah, right. right. So well, I, no I did want, and, and, and I, hand hand. I did thank be. Senator Harcum for doing that because um, that's key yeah. to getting our. Um, our police officers pay. the pay that they, they deserve if, when and if they get involved in this. So I did, um, okay, I'm just trying to think if there's any. did a pretty good job covering it. Well, it's, <laughs> do you it know? It could be another story tomorrow. That's I have an exchange uh, in every did, hour. Did, in, in your calls, was it clear whether or not an asymptomatic person is contagious? If you have no symptoms, are you contagious during that time, or you're yeah. contagious 
when you are expressing symptoms, even mildly, be it through a cough or a sneeze. You can be asymptomatic for five days uh, before or, or never get, get symptoms, and you can shed this virus. Did, did you Children are not being affected as much as right. older at-risk people. Take I mean, this. right now, if you're healthy, you know, you, you, you could have it, right. basically not know it, or think it's a mild cold, and you're gonna, your body's going to yeah. deal with it. Except they can carry it back to their parents. Uh, right, that's the problem. Is they're not going to yeah. get anything, but they, they can carry it. Right. Do you that's know the test And that's, that's nothing new. I mean, I have grandchildren, so do you. Yeah. They, come, they, they, they come home over the Are weekend. Are they still coming to your house? Or, uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you know if the yeah. tests work if they're asymptomatic? Uh, no, they wouldn't even be tested. Yeah, you wouldn't even be tested if you're asymptomatic. Right. Right. You, you can't, can't just go with, That's what they're saying. You can't just right. go in with no symptoms and say, I want to be tested. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're having a hard enough time testing people. Well, but the question is what? If you want to test, go to South Korea and come back. Right. And actually, that's where we first heard about the drive-through testing. Yeah. They had, you know, people drive through the cars, they do a swab. I can't believe that. They travel on. Bring it here. Because if, and the other message here too is, if you are feeling ill, you have over 100 temperature, you have a sore throat, you have respiratory problems, call your medical provider. Do not go drive to yeah. an emergency room. They do not want you in an emergency room where you're going to infect not only the people that are there, but the medical staff who we need to deal with trauma. And, uh, and we want you to call your doctor and not just show up at urgent care. You go to urgent care, what, what do we hear, Tom, that there's a sign that says, uh, if you have flu-like symptoms, don't, do not come in here. Right. You know, call us. So, um, and then they'll either tell you to come in or they'll tell you what to do. Yeah, right. meet somewhere else. How about that person Volunteers. flew from, I think it was New York to West Palm Beach on JetBlue, got off the plane, I think yesterday, and said to people he had tested positive. Yeah, they he knew, knew when he was getting on. Before he got on the plane. That's a tragedy. Who would do that? Now that everybody on that plane, of course, has to be quarantined or tested or something. Right. That's crazy. Well, it's, and it's a 14-day period. You know, until they get the testing up and running in a better fashion, because we know people who have shown symptoms that are comparable to this, and it's taken five days for them to get a test. Yeah. So that's five days of people not knowing was I exposed to them. Yeah. I mean, and so that's that's the big thing is that the tests have to be rolled out faster and they have Definitely. to be put in such a place where you get easier access to it. They didn't speak anything about that or for towns like Somers and North Salem. When these tests come out and they're easier, we're gonna put a drive-through facility at your townhouse or anything like that. There was no, no. no discussion of that. Okay. Not yet. No. Um, I, I would suspect we're not gonna see that until they draw a circle around, a one mile circle around our positive cases. Um, but who knows, in the coming weeks, it could be one mile yeah, circle I, everywhere. I yeah. think it's gonna get worse before it gets better. I, I really right. didn't think that it was gonna be this big a deal. When it first mm -hmm. happened, I said, "Ah, oh, okay," but uh, I nor, guess I'm nor, wrong. Nor, nor did a lot of people. But <laughs> it's uh, look forewarned, prepared. You know, we um, we're trying to cover every base th that we can, and you know, the message is, you know, stay home. Basically, if you're you know over 70, um, you're in this high risk category. Yeah, if you don't stay have to go home. out, don't go out, and do not look at your stocks. Yeah. No. no. And get well, that's, Clorox that's, wipes these. Yeah, we'll, we'll have wipes these flaming us. We'll do the financial report at uh, some later date. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> yes. on another uh, negative uh, note, our next item on the agenda. Um, let's see, where are we? I just. Something that okay, you hope you number two. Have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, discussion of a resolution decrying anti semitic Semitism. Semit Anti Semitic Anti attacks, Anti -Semitic attacks yeah. and, and hate crimes. Uh, we, we did this back in uh, 2016, um, but with the recent, um, over the holidays, the attacks over in Rockland County. And unfortunately, um, I think it was last week yes. in the school, there were Two some. instances. Yeah, you know, a couple of uh, swatskas were found. Um, you know, these. 
these acts are, are unacceptable and you know are fully investigated and uh, our, our town police and our um, the Jewish communi community have worked very closely together um, on Saturdays when there's instruction and services uh, over at the synagogue uh, there is a police presence by the town uh, of Somers and uh, we fully support um, efforts to um, you know protect them during every day of the week but especially during their services so I had in your packet here uh, for consideration as a uh, resolution um, Absolutely, it's comparable to the one we did last time right yeah it's a little a uh, little different but um, it, it, we updated it um, I I'll read it and whereas our nation was founded on the principles of religious freedom and the right of all people to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And contrary to those principles, there has been a significant increase of violence and anti-Semitic attacks throughout the United States, and particularly New York State, Hudson Valley region. Whereas the town of Somers takes pride in its democracy, enriched by people of different religions, races, sexual orientations, gender identities, ability, ages, places of birth, and origin, and whereas the town board considers it our moral obligation and obligation as elected representatives of the community to work with other community leaders to condemn acts of hate against the Jewish community and all who are targeted for their differences. Therefore, be it resolved that the town of Somers is commit to, committed to upholding and protecting the civil rights, civil and human rights of all individuals regardless of their race, religion, ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, identity, ability, place of birth, or national origin, as well as protecting the life and safety and security of all. Be it further resolved that the town of Somers condemns the acts on the people of the Jewish community and implores public officials to confront the realities of anti-Semitism and speak out against it. Um, that never again will large-scale movement be taken against Jewish people or any group because of their differences and acknowledges the need for increased vigilance at Jewish communal spaces to ensure their security and recognize the particular vulnerabilities faced by uh, Jews um, of color and transgender Jews. Be it further resolved that the town of Somers is appalled by the anti-Semitic attacks we stand in solidarity with our neighbors, uh, neighboring communities, and rejecting all forms of bigotry, hatred, or discrimination of any kind. There is no place for hate in the town of Somers. Dated March 12th, 2020. I'd just like to say one, th two things. One, that uh, you know that applies to everyone, right? You're talking about our, uh, our, uh, you know, Jewish community. Uh, you know, I always say this, I, you know, I'm absolutely confident that our institutions act and have the, uh, you know, the wherewithal to act in a proper manner um, and advocate, you know, for equal treatment. But when it gets down to individuals, it just, just boggles my mind that, you know, we still have people that uh, continue along this, this, you know, disgusting behavior, uh, whether it be, you know, um, you know, just bad behavior, stupid behavior, disgusting behavior, but we just have to push back. Well, and you know, we, we talk about it at a, at a public meeting, we, um, and this resolution really just, as public and elected officials, we're, we're making a stand, and this will be part of our, our record. But the, I think the, uh, it also, you have to say that if you experience this, you have to come forward and let us know. You have to let the school officials know. You have to let the town board know, or people that, that in in authority in all the institutions of this town. And I'm confident they'll take the appropriate action, actions. Here we go. I mean, it's it's what the country is about. People come from all over the world for those protections that we take for granted. Until you see 
fringe people for whatever reason they have of hatred and it expresses itself in these terrible acts and it really is not it's really not American and it's it's not what this country stands for and I'm not sure that anybody has those feelings going to look at that resolution and go oh I better not do this again but you know we have to you have to one of the things you can do is do exactly what you've done here. Just express our outrage at that and the enforcement of laws that are designed to protect people from the actions that clearly are biased, bigoted, racist, and whatever else that uh, reason people have for doing terrible things. It's terrible. Okay. okay. I'll entertain a motion to uh, adopt this resolution. So moved. Good. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Okay, next order of business is personnel. We have current vacancies on our affordable housing board, uh, library board of trustees, partners in prevention, um, upcoming vacancies in architectural review and parks and recreation. Uh, I want to uh, authorize the promotion of Jamie Anderson from maintenance laborer grade three to parks groundkeeper grade four. Step one, an annual salary of $43,786 in accordance with the CSEA contract and pursuant to title reclassification by the County Civil Service Department memo dated March 6th from Steve Ralston, um, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation. I'd like to um, authorize promotion of Jesse Anderson regarding the same title grade um, groundskeeper to um, same contract by memo from Steve Ralston. So congratulations to Jamie and Jesse um, for their promotions. And also to authorize the rehiring of Mr. Ian Turney as a seasonal office assistant at an hourly rate of 14.25 cents per memo dated March 6th from Steve Ralston, Superintendent of Parks and Recreation, and that will be effective May 11th, 2020. So I'd like to make a motion to adopt uh, three, four, and five. Sec uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Okay, and our consensus agenda. Pretty straightforward. One through six. And Patty, remind me, um, April 2nd, what, yeah. The sewer district, sewer district public meeting. Okay. So on our calendar. Oh, do wait, can we move the consensus agenda? Oh, sure, okay. So if there's no questions. And just for those who, people who know, normally our second meeting of the month is the second Thursday, but because of Easter and the Holy Thursday and Good Friday and all that, we're moving that to April 16th. Right, so we're moving from the 9th to the 16th. To the 16th. Okay, I'll make a motion uh, to adopt the consensus agenda, one through six. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. So Aye. moved. Aye. Okay, now on our calendar, we have um, April 2nd, we, we would begin the public hearings for the establishment of the sewer districts in Lake Lincolndale and in Shenorock. Now, um, if history repeats itself, we're going to have, once again, quite a few people at that public hearing. And, um, you know, April 2nd is fast approaching. So the, the thought is, do we want to push that out to the 16th and have our public hearing then? Have you published her? I sent it to the paper and then had the conversation with Rick. I can still pull it. And that's my reasoning for having this conversation tonight because of the cost. At this point, I think I would push it back just because we still don't know what's going to be but going on. But we adopted on. an order last week scheduling that public hearing. So we would have to rescind that order, correct? Yeah. Fair no one. To reschedule. <clears throat> uh, yeah. You don't think you order. need two, two nights? For that, uh, you know, we may not answer all those questions. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> well, technically, I mean, the map plan and report had really not changed. You know, the what has changed is some of the financials, 
but I think uh, the financials that are that have changed are basically benefit. Oh, that, and definitely. It, and it's it's what we learned in the prior public hearings. So is it conceivable that uh, we can open and close a public hearing on this on the 16th? I've already no. sent the order calling public hearing to the state controller. Okay, then let's just leave it. Right. We'll, yeah. we'll just take, so we'll I, figure it out yes. at that time. Yeah. I mean, we'll wait to see what April brings. I mean, that's fine. It was just a, a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Hmm. How does the state, how does because the Because you know what, on April 2nd, uh, in the climate we're in, who knows? what we'll actually be doing on April 2nd. Right, right. That's, that's so, right. you know, I want to know, um, Andreas, tell me what the number on that permit on the wall says. How many how many people are allowed in, in here? So the occupancy here says 97. So assembly space occupancy by no more than 97 persons is unlawful behavior. Okay, 97. Thank you. Thank you. So you're like 43, 48, 46. 48. Yeah. Oh, so, so we're we're constricted to the number of people too, yeah. based on yeah. that, not just restaurants. Mm -hmm. Forty-eight and a half. Well, but there's a way around that. If you decided to go to a larger room, mm -hmm. you would just need to station somebody here and put signs up directing them to the new location. Yeah, but unfortunately, it, it, we usually use the schools, and at that point, the schools could probably be yeah. closed, and they close. They're closing at six thirty now. Yeah. Uh, so. This is it. I mean, they're limiting our use of the, of the schools right now. Oh. So there's not 40-something the chairs there. Or postponed. Okay. It was, just, it was just, you know, food for thought. Uh, no, uh, all right. It actually makes sense. We're going to see what happens come next. 40, I just want to go and see 40. what April brings, you know? 40, 41. Thank you. So what's what's our pleasure? Our pleasure is we're going to keep it for the second and play it by ear. I mean, you've theory, already done what right, you needed to do. Right. If, if, if we have to enforce that, like carry it over with people who weren't here, but give it, them another it, chance to come in. You can have a police officer at the door and a count to come in, and maybe you know forty-eight, and that's it. Well, all the more reason why you'd have to adjourn it. And right, carry it over to the second night. Yeah, because you need to get yeah. the other people. We thought it would go in. over to the 16th. Right. We right. never thought you'd be able to close it and adopt on the second. So yeah, that's why we have yeah. two dates. All right, why don't yeah. we'll, say yeah, we don't know if we'll, we'll be here on the second. So. <laughs> okay, we will. Right. Um, yeah, I'm sure right. Nobody knows. It's a work right, so we'll right as is. We'll leave it as is. Okay, so that everything's a play by ear right now. Is your travel affected, Tom? Yeah, we have uh, banned all domestic and international flight travel. The only thing we could possibly do is buy cars. But I will tell you this, many of our customers that we deal with have want? a ban on visitors right now. Yeah. Wow. They, they won't even let you in the building. So. Yeah, well, you know what? These are um, <laughs> everything we're drastic actions, but that's Jurassic what's times. probably necessary. Now, just keep in mind, everybody, the messages we're about to read you. <laughs> yeah, right. Keep a close eye because most of them, if not all of them, could be canceled in the next few days. Right. I'll go first. Shoot. <laughs> I'm sure this will get canceled. Family and Children's Aid uh, is offering a free baseball clinic uh, with MLB alumni. Uh, up to 10 former Major League Baseball players will teach baseball and life skills. Its suggested ages are from 6 to 16. Participants will receive an authentic Rawlings Major League Baseball alumni baseball at the end. Uh, this is March 28th, Saturday, 4.30 to 7.30 p.m., hosted by Bat Complex and New York Silverbacks Baseball, 245 Route 100, Somers, New York, which is the... Uh, Cross the uh, Mexican shack, right? Yeah, it's the yeah. sports, somewhere sports center. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now, I will say that uh, volleyball was supposed to start up there this Saturday, um, mm -hmm. and they've canceled that. They pushed that back for two weeks at least. So things like this, I think, are probably going to be either pushed back or, or, or rescheduled. So. Okay. 
but that's it. Oh, do I have another one? Yeah. Oh, I do. Sorry. Uh, the annual egg hunt is uh, Saturday, April 4th, 10 a.m., Reese Park, sponsored by the Leos, the Senior Citizen Club, and the Department of Parks and Recreation. Join us to meet Cottontail the Bunny and collect eggs that will be redeemed for candy. Cottontail will be fist bumping. Um, <laughs> that's not down here. I well, said that. All those hugs are going to have to wait. Uh, open to Somers residents two to eight years old, so it's the crew that don't get it. Um, complimentary egg collection bag donated by the Somers Senior Citizen Club will be given out at the day of the event. So again, April 4th, Reese Park, 10 a.m. Come out and meet Cottontail. Okay, let me just interrupt the announcements. We have a special guest this evening, our Chief of Police. Chief, get the uh, punch. I think it's a formality. I'm requesting executive session with the town board at this time. Okay. okay. We're going to be finishing up the meeting right now. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Anthony? Okay. Uh, this is the Somers Litter Task Force. Uh, it's going to be Saturday, April 18th through uh, Sunday, April 19th. Uh, Susie Morvac is the uh, leader of the committee. Um, she's looking for people to sign up or donate. You can reach her by uh, calling 914-486-0355. That's Susie Morvac, 914-486-0355. I mean, this is a big deal for Somers. Uh, you know, our volunteers essentially clean up the town, all the major roads and thoroughfares. And this group does a, an awesome, awesome job. Right. And, and then for those two days, you're going to see people out with vests on Route 100 um, with a police escort. And um, we always encourage you just pick up in front of your own property and um, the town will be a much cleaner and place to be. Okay. And uh, the Somers Historical Society, in, con in conjunction uh, with uh, the annual World Class Circus Day, uh, celebration at the Elephant Hotel is going to have a fine arts show and sale, the Somers Art Circle. It's the second annual one. It's going to be Saturday, April 18th, uh, noon through 4 p.m. at Bally Park uh, in Somers. Okay. So I guess there are things that they're asking people to bring no, as well. The original paintings, drawings, and sculptures, and photography will be shown there. Uh, there's a registration form here that I think if you want to participate, you would do that. And I'm not sure where they're going to you know, get this on the way or this will be posted on the yeah, website. Yeah, that'll be up on the website. Okay. So please take a look at that. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, in conjunction with the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, which is this year, 2020, going back to 1970, uh, on April 25th, at the Somers Intermediate School parking lot, there is the annual electronic appliance, computer equipment, uh, keyboards, monitors, cord, ca data cabling, washers, TVs, scrap metal, welcome to. It is the recycling day, e-waste and scrap metal recycling day, which is sponsored by City Carding at no, no cost. Um, and there is a $5 suggested donation to the Somers PTA as you pull in there. But all that stuff, you can bring and it gets recycled, which is better than throwing it away. And on Earth Day, or in, in memory of Earth Day, in commemoration of Earth Day, that's a good thing. Somers Recycling Day, April 25th, at the uh, Pete, uh, Somers Intermediate <coughs> School parking lot. Yeah, come early, that's a very uh, popular event. 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., right. And when I think that I will mention, I believe we all received an invitation to be there at 12 o'clock. Um, to be recognized and have our pictures taken with City Carding and the PTA. Or they need help moving the scrap metal. Oh, is that it? Uh, and so that's it. Uh, bring your gloves. Okay. Bring your gloves. I should have known. <laughs> okay. And also, for those concerned about guarding themselves against identity theft, the county is sponsoring the mobile shredder once again for personal documents sensitive material it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Reese Park Friday May 1st so bring anything you don't want the bad guys to get a hold of 
Secondly, they're still looking for employees to help with the 2020 census, which of course is a constitutional requirement and very important because it allocates how funds are distributed, government funds are distributed. If you're interested, please go to 2020census.gov slash jobs or call 1-855-JOB-2020. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. So this will uh, conclude our regular meeting of March 12th. Oh, I just want to mention one thing, sure. if I may. So sometimes, you know, say so we're going through this cor coronavirus and you don't realize what you have in life sometimes when you don't have it, till you don't have it. And so the time we live in sort of shows that, uh, you know, you take some things for granted and then you, you can't. And I had a, in a similar vein before a corona all started hitting on... Met March 3rd, so that's last week on a Tuesday night. My dog's barking really loud at quarter to four in the morning. Really loud, like, what was there a truck outside? Wakes me up. Then I hear something up. knock over, there's a bang, go, what the heck? What is the dog doing? So I run into the living room, trying to like, what are you barking at? And I figure she's barking at the sliding glass door, there's something outside. She saw her reflection. No, in the middle of the <laughs> living room, there is a big raccoon. <gasps> A big raccoon right in the, on the in dog the living room? in the living room. Indoors. It wasn't watching TV, so I'm not sure what it was doing, but it was there, and the dog has it oh, cornered. Jesus. So, oh my goodness, oh, you talk gosh. about heart. So I get the dog out before it starts getting scratched or something. So the, like, the dog's barking, and the raccoon's getting scared, obviously not rabid. And so I get the dog outside and then go, now what do I do, right? Should I Google, I've got a raccoon in my house? I don't know. So I figure, oh, I'm going to call animal control officer. No, we have a dog control officer and no one's answering the phone at quarter to four in the morning. Mm -hmm. Town of, town of, I mean the county of Westchester. Better not say the town of Turner. Quarter. <laughs> Where's Roland? You that Where's call? you in your net? <laughs> so I call 911 when you don't know, that's what you do. And in 20 minutes, so I'm, so I get the dog outside. I'm in the living room at one side, and I'm watching this raccoon, which has run across the bottom of, once the dog was out of the way, it ran across the side of the living room, goes up a bookcase, and on top of the bookcase behind a plant, it looks like he thinks he's hiding. And I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me. You know, I'm not going to take my eyes off him. So uh, I'd open the door, hoping he would run out, but he didn't. So the state police come. Two guys come in like 20 minutes, so I really appreciate it. I said, do you have any, do they like teach this in police school? <laughs> no, we have no experience. So literally while I was there, I had Googled it and they said, get some large poles. And I had some large poles. I said, Mark, go get the large poles that we use for the skylight. And so these two guys are climbing around my living room, poking this thing to the sliding glass door that was still open. I was hoping that there wasn't a family of records. Hey, it's open house, come on in. He's got food. And the thing runs out the door and these guys, so I said, man, I wanna thank you, what's your name? Well, we don't give you out our names, but thank you so much. They were great and my point is simply this. We take for granted all the things that we have living in Somers, all the things we have in America, all the things around us. And you don't quite appreciate that even in the middle of the night, you have people you can rely on. And so I'm really thankful for that. It was, it was quite a thing that I had to go back to bed. Yeah. Did you close so you the door? We, clo we did yeah. close the door. We gave the dog some extra bones you know, yeah. for but saving did, us. But did you get the keys from the raccoon? <laughs> <laughs> I said, next door, next door. <laughs> yeah, it was quite a night, but thank you to the state Everybody. police for doing that. Excitement in a different way. Okay, before I uh, close the meeting, I uh, want to make a motion to move to executive session. To for discuss policies. Discuss policies. Personal uh, policies? Excuse yeah. me? Personnel sure. Real estate. Yeah. Personnel. Yeah. Personnel policies. Uh, not to return to not to return. the meeting. And then further make a motion to close the meeting. Second. 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 Beautiful. All in favor? Aye, aye. Aye. So moved. Good night, Somers. Stay healthy. Be well. Mm -hmm.